dudes, it's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So we got another Prime Resurgence announced today, and yeah, this one should be going alongside the Ember Resurgence coming out on Saturday for Tenocon, so let's get right into it. Now, before we go over this though, reminder, we don't really have all the exact details on what's happening with Ember. If, if I had my guess, I'd say that Ember will be available until the end of the year, just like Frost is available until the end of the year. Uh, with the previous heirloom thing. That being said, the Frost skin was time limited. This Ember skin is not time limited. So I hope that they're going to be having this around for the rest of the year. They might have said that, but I don't really remember at this point. So let's get right into what we have, though, with the new Resurgence that should be going alongside Ember. I really appreciate all the support on the recent videos, guys, and I will keep on making Warframe videos no matter what. So let's get right into it. All right, next Prime Resurgence is going to be Mesa and Limbo in about two weeks from today. So Mesa is going to have the Akjagara Prime and the Redeemer Prime, and Limbo is going to have the Pyrana Prime and the Distreza Prime. Now, as far as some of their cosmetics, I've got a bunch of them linked right here. You've got the Anten Prime Earpiece, so it's like a ear armor thing for your operator. Basically, some like dangling uh, hoop earrings. Looks kind of okay if you are into that kind of look. The Respa Prime Mask, kind of like a gas mask, I guess I'd call it a little bit. Um, See-through, and I believe that is, that might only be for the operator, unfortunately. It says for your operator, but who knows. Erlang Prime Oculus, so if you want a little monocle thing, maybe do some Lloyd cosplay, there you go. A little operator uh, monocle. And then we've got the Mesa Prime. Okay, so this is with Mesa Prime. This is a special helmet that only works with Mesa Prime, and you're going to have to buy this Regal Aya. So if you like the looks of this helmet, the only way to get it is through Regal Aya. It is an exclusive Mesa Prime helmet. Some people like it, some people don't. When you see someone have this equipped, it's kind of like an ooh, you have that helmet kind of moment, at least for me. The Cholia Prime Sugatra, I mean, who cares about Sugatras, honestly? But this little dangly thing for your melee, that's technically a Prime cosmetic that will cost you a Regal Eye. <laughs> so, yeah. If you like it, go for it. I don't really like it personally. Then we got the Oblivia Prime Cyandana with Limbo, a very flat looking cape, very plastic looking cape, rubber plastic looking cape here. I think it looks really bad, but somebody out there might like it. And then you got the Rift Walker Prime Sigil. Kind of hard to see with this red energy color, but it's like a glowing sigil right here. Looks pretty cool. That's going to be most of your cosmetics. Let's go over the items and weapons these characters are going to have with them to see if it's actually worth your Regal so Eye or Time. And yeah, sure reminder guys, I said it would be in the video, Let's but yeah. Uh, Glaive Prime and Ember Prime will be here on Saturday. That's probably going to be in addition to all the stuff we have here. I don't think I don't think that's replacing what we have, personally. Uh, no I'd be very shocked if they yeah, didn't have a triple Prime time. Resurgence going with Ember on these two new frames here. Alright, so going over... Let's go over Limbo first, because, I mean, it's been a while, to be honest, right now. So we got Limbo Prime, and as far as his weapons, you have the Pyrana Prime, which is very power crept nowadays, to be honest, and the Distressa Prime, which is actually still really good, in my opinion. All right, so as far as the stats on these things, the Pyrana Prime is a slash-focused uh, crit shotgun pistol that's full auto. The special ability of this thing, they don't really give special abilities to Primes very often, but this is like a, uh, kind of like a mini Incarnon before Incarnons existed. After you get, I think, like three or four kills in rapid succession, you summon a second, oh, it's three kills in rapid succession, a second Ethereal Pyrana Prime with Deadly Punch. So it gives you more fire rate, gives you more uh, reload speed, I believe, and more magazine size if you get three rapid kills. That being said, I mean, the, the power crep stats of 2024 are kind of moving past this thing. I wouldn't mind a Pyrana Prime and Karnon, but yeah, just pretty much a full auto slash pistol with bad status uh, and good crit. So it's fun. It's fun. It's got bad range, too, to be, to be honest. I mean, 18 to 36 meter fall off, pretty terrible. Um, but you can make it. You can make it work pretty well. Uh, I don't think I still have a Pyrona ribbon. Do I? I do have a Pyrona ribbon still. It's good for Plague Star for killing the uh, the Plague Boss if that cover comes back. It's good for like you know just killing some enemies. So yeah, you can get some pretty decent ribbons for it. Uh, I'd recommend like fire rate, crit damage, minus zoom is pretty good. If it's, if you had multi shot instead of damage, that'd probably be a lot better. Maybe even crit chance because I've only got sixty eight point nine percent crit chance with a non crit chance ribbon. And yeah, you could maybe get to a hundo with a crit chance ribbon, but it's got pretty low stats, so maybe not. Either way, a pretty fun weapon, probably one of the better weapons in this bundle. Um, even though I do think it's a little bit power crept nowadays. Distress of Prime, probably still the best like rapier weapon in the game. Uh, it's got really high stats: thirty-two percent crit chance, three x base crit multiplier. That's really good. Twenty percent status chance, and it's mostly slash 
and uh, actually, no, it's mostly puncture with a bit of slash and impact thrown in the mix too. Yeah, mostly puncture. So puncture procs not super useful, um, especially with the damage type changes recently. I mean, it's, it, they, no, they didn't really do anything to them to be honest. They still like enemies deal less damage to you. At least you get more crit chance. But yeah, Distress of Prime really good uh, as far as a weapon is concerned. Now it could actually do like crazy finisher builds with like um, with like Mark for Death. All rapiers can do that because they have a four slash proc on finisher. But, you know, just a normal, generic, like, lead attack build is also really good. So I, I'd recommend that, too. Viral Hunter Manisha, or Viral uh, viral Slash, because the stance is a built-in slash. With Just Sack, Frucial Steel, 100% crit chance. Very nice right there. There's heavy attack builds you can run, too. There's just a, there's plenty of options with this thing, and I actually think it's quite good. Uh, but the thing is, it's a it's a generic weapon. Like, it, it, it might be good, but it has just it's just a generic weapon. It's just a rapier. It has good damage, and that's all I can really say about it. Um, so, yeah, if you want to try this out, it looks very nice fashion-wise. I actually have a skit on it right now. Um, it looks very nice fashion frame-wise. You can make it look very, very fancy. But, uh, yeah, if I saw you using this mission, I'd probably laugh at you, to be honest. So, And speaking of laughing, if you're playing in mission, let's go over uh, the frame that these weapons are going to come with. Your boy, Lumbo Prime. Now, before before Overguard existed, this guy was the king of the Grenier, because Grenier could do nothing about him. But now that Overguard's been in the game for a while, uh, his stasis ability, which freezes enemies in time... Now is a lot less useful because enemies can just walk right through with the head overguard. So you throw on the bubble, you throw on the, the stasis, you throw on the cataclysm bubble, and you throw on stasis, and enemies should be frozen in the bubble. I've got resonator to make it even easier, but there's other helmets for him as well. Rift surge is a more of a weird ability; it just kind of primes enemies to go put other enemies into the void. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I would actually say don't even bother with limbo. Now the funny thing is he was actually kind of expensive because he hadn't been unvaulted for a while, and then here's him being unvaulted and becoming a lot cheaper. So as far as helmets I use on limbo, I got uh, resonator. I got pull. I got dark burst. I was testing out. I would not recommend that. And I've also got uh, ensnare. So I really recommend probably uh, just resonator. Now for, for our loot box explode build, go maximum range and blow up the entire map of loot boxes. Uh, those containers that like hold things like uh, you know resources and credits that can be great for farming some uh, some sitting medallions for just getting some rep. So yeah, not a very good frame. His abilities pretty much don't work on. Eximus, and no, no abilities are supposed to work on Eximus, but this guy gets really wrecked by him because he has no damage abilities to take care of the Overguard. I would say that Limbo could honestly use a buff in 2024. Make it over, make a stasis augment that removes enemy Overguard as they walk in. Like, it just scales to strength. The, the longer they are in the bubble, the quicker their Overguard is removed, or something like that. Might be a little bit too AFKable, but honestly, Limbo is not a frame that people really like to have in their squads, like, at all. And he's not very good, either, in 2024, so that's unfortunate. As someone that used to really like Limbo, I could definitely appreciate a buff for this guy in 2024. But yeah, moving on to a frame that does not need a buff. Move on to Mesa and her weapons. Now, actually, with Mesa, the Astragara Prime and her other weapon, the, um, the, uh... What's it called? The Redeemer Prime are actually pretty decent on the current patch because the Actragara Prime uh, and the Redeemer Prime got some buffs from the recent patch changes. So the, for the Actragara Prime, these are supposed to be like burst pistols. But remember, we have the full auto changes now. You can make any weapon full auto by just holding on the trigger. So this weapon that used to be burst, you had to click it manually every time, is now full auto. You just hold on the trigger and it fires really fast. Uh, high, highly slash focused uh, hybrid pistols. We've got 75% CC and 96% C, uh, status chance on this build. And I do have a Riven with multi-shot and crit chance. Uh, now, they don't have the highest base damage, to be honest. But, like, we've got, 30, yeah, we've got 38 base damage, most of it being slash. Um, but they can do some decent slash procs, honestly. And they can fire quite a few bullets quickly with the amount of, uh, you know, fire rate they have at, at base. A little bit of .2 punch through built in to shoot through some Lancer shields, too. They're pretty decent pistols. Um, but, yeah, they could definitely use an Incarnate. And from what it seems like, they're probably not going to get an Incarnate anytime soon. But we'll see. Um, yeah, kind of low, kinda low uh, crit chance, but good crit damage. And, yeah, I think these things are fun. Just maybe not. I wouldn't call them must-haves, honestly. But, yeah, with the changes to the full auto, it, they're buffed and they're easier to use than ever. So maybe try them out at least. And for talking about buffs with the recent changes, we got the Redeemer Prime right here. Now, why the Redeemer Prime get buffed? Look at this right here. The damage per projectile is going to be blast damage. And if you've been paying attention to blast damage changes, blast damage got massively buffed. It no longer just makes enemies inaccurate. It makes them explode and take extra damage. Well, they'll, deal, they'll take an extra DOT. So that being said, you can probably make a really nasty Redeemer build in 2024 on this current patch. I sold my Redeemer Room for a lot of plat uh, somewhat recently, so I'm not going to really have a full build to show you. But basically, yeah, something like this. 
Maybe throw on a good mod here, like maybe Prime Beaver Strike or something. Now, reminder too, it does have built-in Blast, and you cannot mod the Blast off. So right now I put on Radiation Toxin. Now we have Radiation Toxin Blast. Not a combination that's usually uh, possible, but we actually made it happen here. So, yeah, as far as uh, mod combos, I'd say probably go for, like, um, Corrosive could be pretty good. So let's take off that Heat Mod, put Corrosive on here. So we got Corrosive Blast, pretty good. Maybe throw on... Um, like something to do a 12x build, so you can just keep uh, firing, firing at the enemy over and over, like with Corrupt Charge, maybe. There's things you can do on this. I wish I stole up my ribbon so I could show you exactly what I want to show you, but yeah, it was good plat, so it's gone right now. But yeah, guys, the Redeemer is pretty nice in 2024. It's like a shotgun melee, and it does not have any IPS on the shot. It only has IPS on the blade, but still, purely blast on the shot might actually be good to some people, so... Yeah, guys. Now, as far as Mesa herself, I have, I have been meaning to make a Mesa video for a long time. Let's go ahead and show you what I have right now. So I was messing around with a Roar um, Ballistic Battery build with no fourth ability. I would not recommend this one in general. <laughs> my my go-to Mesa build is this one right here. I use it for level 10,000 circuit missions. We got Zata's Whisper from Zaku, which gives you extra void damage, which does work on her pistols. We got... Uh, Reverse ability, which is great for shield gating and gives you a little bit of a damage buff. We got our second ability, shooting gallery, to stun number of enemies and give a damage buff. And you got the Mesa Peacemaker pistols, the great thing to just shoot enemies really fast. Uh, as far as the modded elements on our pistols, uh, well, I've, I've got Arcane Velocity and Arcane Energize. We do not have Prime Shrift. Actually, we do have Prime Shrift on here because uh, Mesa's Waltz is also pretty good. But as far as the pistols, I've modded uh, her regulators for corrosive and heat. And get ready for a pretty high investment build, just a heads up. We've got. Almost everything primed or galvanized here. We've got um, Prime heat Convulsion and Prime Heated Charge and Prime Gifts Pistol Game and Prime Target Cracker with double galvanized. So a pretty high investment build here. Um, yeah, this is what I usually run on Mesa, Corrosive, and Heat. And of course, you could easily change it to like some other element if you wanted to by just changing off some of these elemental mods for something else. Yeah, Mesa does not need really any introductions. She's a really fast, uh, you know, aimbot character basically and she's really strong so i'd highly recommend getting her as far as shards uh get some orange shards for extra crit chance on her pistols and green shards for moving enemy armor a little bit quicker now i might change this i haven't really changed this since the patch on, on her specifically on frames like uh on frames like like dante i think i've got one green shard on him i still have two so some of these frames are probably gonna switch back to two green shards so i find that to be a little bit more useful nowadays but uh, yeah, two or to one green one green towel, but two green shards is fine too. Still, if you guys want to use that, so that's my review of the upcoming Prime Access that will be alongside Ember most likely. I highly doubt that Ember will only be here for two weeks, but we'll find out. Or rather, maybe they already told us, but I'll find out on Saturday, and it's gonna be a fun time. Either way, guys, see you next time. Appreciate your support, and yeah, I'll be live on stream doing Dev Stream Bingo tonight. So come on, stop by. Appreciate your support. Take it easy. Peace.